Good morning, everybody. It's uh, already 11. Um, I see some participants connecting. So I think it's time to start uh, with this webinar. Thank you so much for attending. Uh, again, good morning. Uh, welcome to the third and last uh, PV Science webinar. We closed today a series uh, of three webinars uh, aimed at presenting part of the, of the project results that have contributed to drive the VIPV technology to a large uh, market deployment. During this series of webinars, uh, we have tried to guide you through the most representative aspects of the PV size project. We have also presented uh, the different technologies developed in the project during the session held yesterday. And today's, uh, today's webinar, as you can see in the following slide, Today's webinar, we will address the need of a software tool for the joint simulation of VIPV and building energy performance. And we will do this uh, by presenting BIM Solar software and PV sites plugin as a tool that helps designers, engineers, architects, and also different end users to integrate VIPV in the design, construction, and management of the, of the building. I would like to introduce you shortly the, the speakers of the session of today. We have, uh, uh, as in previous uh, webinars, we have Pierre Vienga and Philippe uh, Alamy, Pierre from BRIP and Philippe from Katka Nation. We will also have the, the help from uh, Willy Maider from Katka Nation as well. And we, uh, in this webinar, we have also Van Kai uh, joining us uh, to end the session. Uh, my name is Pablo Alonso, as, as in previous uh, webinars, I will be moderating, moderating the session. As uh, jumping into the agenda, uh, as uh, as agenda of today, after this welcome uh, this welcome part, uh, Thierry will introduce you to to VIPV design. Uh, following this session, Philippe uh, will go into detail of uh, of Beam Solar, and finally Bankai will present uh, Beam and connections for architecture, engineering, and construction. I would like to, to take the time at this point to inform the participants that, uh, as I did in previous uh, webinars, that. Uh, you can access the project results as well as the presentations and recordings from previous webinars at uh, pvsites.eu uh, and also follow pvsites in social media by tracking our hashtag pvsites. Uh, I would like also to invite the participants to write your questions uh, during the session by using this question icon at the bottom of your screen and then uh, we will try to um, or we might try to answer your questions during the session but we will clarify them during uh, the end of the session these 15 minutes dedicated for questions and answers. So having said that, I think it's time to, to start with the presentations. Uh, I hope you enjoy this uh, this webinar. I would like to introduce you to our first speaker, Thierry Yenga, and he will introduce you to, to VIPV Design. So Thierry, uh, whenever you're ready, the floor is, is yours. Uh, thank you, Pablo. Yeah, here it is. Uh, yeah, well, this was already the agenda, of course. Um, I go a little too fast, but in the in the e-catalog, uh, the the PDF book that you can download, it's uh, I just showed it. Uh, but uh, we have also a chapter on the design process and what's happening uh, in the in the architecture of the design. Um, the design process in different countries uh, is, is not exactly the same. Uh, for the PV sites project, we have uh, demo sites in these four countries. And uh, for these four countries, uh, uh, everywhere the, the whole procedure is a little different. But uh, we try to make a kind of a, a scheme so that you can see uh, what it is in French, what is in English, and, and German, and Spanish. Um, the going to the next page actually i will go into this uh, steps of the uh, of the design process uh, starting with the the brief uh, the brief actually is uh, in, in general the start of the project it's a kind of a description of requirements from the client and uh, for the architect is a most important document actually together with the interviews with the client of course he will uh, and, and the location and, and the local regulation, he will start making the design for, for the building and uh, small building or big building, it doesn't matter. It's actually the same. Um, if you look to the, the brief, then uh, we can also see if there are BAPV aspects in the brief, uh, because sometimes uh, there are goals like for a building like a nearly zero energy building or passive house or should be energy neutral. 
uh, can be that there is uh, requirements like uh, should be green or sustainability design or it should have a assessment like bream or lead or well um, and, and sometimes they just ask for uh, installation of photovoltaics. If you if you think about the impact for the designers of this these requirements in the brief, it is like if you have a nearly zero energy building or you have energy neutral building, you have to calculate actually directly from the beginning uh, the energy balance of the building and to see how you can uh, impl implement the photovoltaics in this uh, building and in your in your calculation, of course. Um, in, in case of uh, of uh, assessment, uh, it's sometimes it's not so important how much energy you produce with your photovoltaic system. Uh, it's a kind of different, but every assessment is different. So you cannot just say it's not important at all, but it's mostly less important to have uh, very uh, detailed figures in the beginning. Uh, and if you go to the third step, uh, the, the, yeah, the requirement for installation of photovoltaics, it's important to find out uh, what is the reason why people want it? Because it's, it can be one of the reasons, one or two, or it can be also like something like it's a remote area or it's a self-supporting ID or it's emergency power or whatever. So there's a lot of reasons uh, to, uh, to ask for a photovoltaic installation of a building. Uh, in the concept design, that is the next step where the architect uh, starts translating actually the brief into a design. Uh, in the past, it was all done by hand with sketchy paper, but nowadays we, we switch already very quickly to some uh, uh, 3D software like SketchUp. And, and in, the, in this stage, actually, it's uh, very critical if you think about applying a BAPV in the building. Uh, if, if you make a building and there is actually almost no space for a BAPV system uh, in your initial design, your concept design, then it will be more will be very hard actually to edit in a later stage. Um, the architect has to make several design proposals for the client. Uh, he also has to choose if you put it in the roof, you put it in the facade, or sometimes you can add building components. Uh, if you think about uh, office building and many floors, you can also make solar shading, for instance. Uh, and if you do this all in, the, in this stage, then uh, you don't have to make big changes. In general, if you the later in the process uh, you make a change, uh, the more complicated it is and the more cost, costly it is. Uh, in case of a grid connection, it's also uh, very wise to consult the utility as early as possible to see if it's uh, if it's easy to connect and, and what is the requirements from the utility in this uh, this whole thing. For the BRPV aspects uh, in the concept design, the energy balance has to be made. Uh, the service for the BRPV uh, should match also the dimensions of the photovoltaic system. If you just think of a simple uh, square uh, roof, uh, and you have uh, you have modules, and then the most the nicest thing is actually if the models, the total dimensions of the models fit the total dimensions of the roof. So it's a more or less a complete system, and not a roof is a lot of holes and, and a lot of different uh, elements in there. Um, it's also easily to uh, adjust your design to the to the dimensions of standard modules right? because now the standard model is, is already there you, you can just check the e catalog and find actually all the all the all the information about the modules uh, and the design is so flexible so if you do it in this stage it is very easy uh, it also it's important uh, to indicate the inverters and the space needed for inverters and to make some space for that in the in the concept design. Uh, it's also in the concept design that uh, uh, after you make a 2, 3 or a 3D model, uh, you need a 3D model actually, but uh, you can start doing energy calculations to see uh, if if the requirements, uh, like let's say like a, a zero energy building, if requirements uh, can be met with the design you're making. Um, that means actually that is uh, the first the, already in the concept design, you start very early in the process. You start with using the VVSites uh, web tool. Uh, you have to create a 3D model. In general, very common actually, it's uh, to use SketchUp, but it's also possible to use uh, uh, other versions of, uh, of other, uh, other software. But um, in this example, we have SketchUp. Uh, you have to import the model in the software, uh, you choose your location, the weather data, etc. And then actually uh, number five, you can see also the picture number five, you can start uh, looking for uh, irradiation simulation and shadow influence. Uh, the example we have here is the demo site we have in Belgium. So it's actually 
uh, beside a few trees, but that are not really standing in front of the house. Uh, beside the trees, there is actually almost no uh, hindrance. So that means uh, it's a pretty easy uh, to explain uh, project. Of course, it's a rectangle roof and uh, there's no big, uh, big uh, objects around there. Uh, you have to select the modules. You can select the modules from the e-catalog and then you start adding the modules. So you start in one corner and then actually you can make your rows and you can see how you can copy it over the roof. Uh, it's very, I, I just explained you very brief because it will be more, uh, explained more in detail by uh, the speakers after me. And then you can find output of whatever you like to know. You can find different types of output. Uh, the next stage, actually, the next step is that you go from your concept design, you go to your preliminary design. Uh, in that stage, also, you get more consultants on board. Uh, you have your, your construction consultant, you have your installations or your electrical consultant. Uh, and, and so you have more knowledge, actually, to, to check if everything is going well. Uh, this is also the stage that uh, you make, you, you, yeah, you make actually design more final. Uh, you will choose your materials. Uh, you're going to make your technical uh, details. Actually, it's a kind of principal details. So it's not really final detail, but it's more or less the way you want to do it. And to make a description of, uh, of the whole project. And actually, this is all, and the cost calculation, of course. And this is all used to uh, uh, also to uh, make the drawings for the building permit. So in this stage, you also ask for the building permit. If you look to the BRPV aspects, uh, you have to to detail and to design the BRPV system in this uh, stage. Uh, you have to make a choice for your modules, uh, the layout of the wiring and the choice for inverters that will be made and the building permit documents will be produced. That is actually important. Uh, the impact is actually that you have to uh, to match the dimensions uh, between the models you choose if it's a standard module and the building dimensions, of course. Or you have to find a solution in your detailing to solve it if it doesn't match. Uh, the detailing of the connection between modules and other building materials is, is a very important uh, thing. Uh, and uh, well, don't forget ventilation behind the models. That is something uh, sometimes uh, people don't are not aware of that and don't think about it. In the process, actually, the architect will probably switch from a, his, uh, his sketchy software, his SketchUp, to BIM software, Revit. Because from this stage on, it will be very technical, very detailed going to the, also the design drawings and going to the, to the contractors uh, we're going to build it, of course, and to install it. Uh, you can export your uh, Revit uh, BIM model in the uh, EFC format and uh, then run the PV side software again to fine tune actually the design. Um, there's a selection of uh, modules and inverters uh, can be made by the architect uh, together with his electric consultant. Uh, in special for very big buildings, it will be uh, always an uh, electrical uh, consultant uh, involved. Uh, sometimes if the project is smaller, it's the main contractor or the installer, or sometimes supplier or the manufacturer of the, of the system. Uh, in general, it's preferable to have the main contractor in the design process and make the BUPV system part of the total uh, building design and also part of the total uh, contract. Uh, because then all the responsibility is on one, one place, actually, that is uh, under the main contractor. Uh, this is not 100% true, what I'm saying, because in some countries, uh, the, the responsibility, for instance, this building in, in, uh, in Belgium, the responsibility stays with the architect until the end of the project. That's different than, than in, uh, in other countries. But uh, in general, it's, uh, if you have a main contractor, the main contractor take the responsibility. Uh, is there any mismatch uh, between elements, then also the cost to solve it is for the main contractor, of course. Uh, if the BAPV system is not in the package of the main contractor, but is done with a separate tender, uh, what I don't prefer, then the responsibility will be for the client or, or for the supplier or the installer. It depends how you discuss this. But you need a very clear discussion also to find out who is responsible for what and how, it is, how you deal with uh, this uh, dysfunction of the system and how you deal with uh, insurance uh, uh, matters, of course, to avoid any problems in a later stage. Uh, then the next stage is actually the detailed design. In this pro process, actually, everything should be more or less clear. Uh, in general, there, is not, uh, there shouldn't be big changes. Uh, all contractors will be chosen. Uh, production drawings are made, so that means if you have a building that has a lot of components, of course, 
And then for every contractor, you need to make his own production drawings. So there will be specific drawings uh, made. Uh, sometimes they're not made by the architect, but they're made by the subcontractor himself and they have to be checked by the architect. Uh, changes are not allowed in the States. And if you do so, it can be very expensive and it can delay the process a lot. It really is horrible if this happens. It's, it's not something you really want. Um, then, of course, the next step is construction. And then it's also the end of the, my explanation for the, for the process. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, uh, Dirk. Very detailed presentation. This this one I, I already seen it during the training training courses for three sites, and I, I really like it. So I found it very detailed. Uh, I will inform. Well, I want to inform the participants that these presentations and the rest will be also available at the end of the, at the, end of the session on the project website. It is uh, time now, indeed, that uh, that we go into detail of uh, of Bill Solar uh, software. So I think, uh, well, I would like to introduce you to, to our first, uh, to our second speaker, which, uh, who is Philippe Alamy. He is, has been also participating in the previous webinars and he will be supported by Willy Mayer as well in, in the end of this uh, webinar. So Philippe, uh, the floor is, is yours. Thank you, Pablo. Good morning, everybody. I'm Philippe Alamy and uh, I will talk with uh, Willy Mayer later on. Um, about how to translate this, uh, this very brilliant presentation from Turk into the digital world. And this is a question of, uh, of course, uh, PV site software developed for the project and BIM uh, industry. Sorry, did you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, I guess you hear me. Yes, yes. Really. Okay, sorry. So why did you join this project? What is the objective of our meeting today? It's mainly to merge within the PV sites project and uh, specialty from Catcamation, merge BIM and BIPV. So to make BIM for BIPV for the first time. And this is PV site project. Back uh, our background, Cat Commission background and ambition. Cat Commission is a Swiss company based near Geneva, and uh, first started to work on uh, with industry on product life cycle management from uh, design to end of life, and translated these these sets and this energy and this innovation to the building industry with the arrival of, of BIM innovation, building information modeling innovation to solve and to support design, build, operate, maintain uh, within um, building operations uh, as explained before by Chirac. Today, CAD Commission is part of Arcan system, BIM distributors for Autodesk solutions and also CAD uh, Commission is keeping uh, its uh, research, development, and innovation department um, held by uh, Van Kai and Willy. The question was uh, how to uh, comply with the main PV sites objective, that means merging. Uh, building, uh, building skin, solar prototyping for new uh, technology, replacement of materials and requirements, technical requirements maybe, but uh, also business requirements and business forecasts. So we took this challenge, oh, sorry, uh, make, I made a mistake. I took, we took this challenge uh, of building integration, of course, because BIM is a question of building integration coupled with uh, solar simulation and uh, of course element modeling that means uh, virtualization of products that means uh, e-catalogs of virtual products so the previous uh, webinars talked about uh, the e-catalog and the, the e-products and today we are mainly talking about the pvc software and beam building information modeling oh sorry I clicked too fast. So oh, 
we're going to present our work. We're going to uh, open perspectives with the next projects and sister projects and foster BIM innovation for BIPV uh, because um, PV site project is ending uh, at the end of uh, June and uh, fostering innovation is uh, our main ambition later on. The challenge was to uh, develop a software tool capable to join simulation and uh, element modeling together with PLD energy performance as explained and, and targeted by TIARC before. The solution is an accurate user-friendly integrated software tool coupled with uh, web uh, performance also based on the BIM Solar existing solution from previous uh, BIPV project and European project. To cite the performance of the new products, focused mainly on the new product, new solutions uh, for the, the BIPV industry to, to support them. Um, and uh, on one hand on the technical point, but also on the commercial point. What is PIPV sites? What's, what is PV sites per software and why is it BIM ready? And what is the role of BIM for BIPV reference workflow? In this project. The genesis, as explained by Tiak, is all about contextual design from brief to detailed um, design and construction. Of course, we always need to merge uh, element level with uh, building uh, modeling and uh, we cannot use any more uh, very traditional uh, and non-dynamic and uh, lacking of, of uh, parameterization solutions. So the need of uh, collaboration and commitment uh, from the technical point of view to the, um, the, the team integration uh, was of course in evidence for us. We chose of course to step into the BIM process and to uh, add, uh, merge BIPV uh, issues with BIM process. But BIM is like an iceberg. We know more about the visualization, uh, the good aspect of coordination, commitment, uh, billing of materials, quantity takeoff, uh, and software, of course, uh, training hardware for BIM. But the hidden interesting part for BIPV is about thermal analysis, lighting analysis, structural analysis, also constructability, and preferred creation. So the relationship with the manufacturing. And this is, of course, the challenge for CAT Commission. The inspiration came also from reality, as you've seen before. Uh, our use case, one of our use case is um, the BIPV roof uh, from a sister project and from uh, other partner uh, within the sister project. I took this picture representing what is our need today, because this is a flat picture uh, with no uh, uh, living parameters, and we, we have to translate this um, way of uh, considering a BIPV roof into a full um, dynamic solution and this is also our in innovation. How to replace uh, tiles by CIJ tiles, for instance, uh, merging with wooden structure mounting devices. This is always the target today uh, and uh, we have to um, develop uh, within the next years this concept because uh, PV sites was the very first step to, to reach this ambition. So this is the main ambition, the total ambition. We want to be BIM, of course, we are CAT Commission and we want to be BIM, uh, it's in evidence for us, but BIM uh, is between also two extreme views and it's a hot topic of all, always and uh, from 20, 30 years from now, uh, it has been a hot topic. Uh, BIM is not only using a software like Autodesk Revit. We will, of course, speak about Autodesk Revit. Uh, it's a choice for us. Choice for us. Um, the ambitious view is BIM for, um, as a revolution, a total revolution to reorganize the construction sector. This is also extreme. So BIM for us and for a lot of uh, people, uh, reasonable maybe, uh, is between these two extreme point of views. Is BIM is for everyone, but BIM is your um, ambition and your, maybe your project, your organization with your practical benefits you can expect from BIM. 
our workflow within PV size project was to comply with uh, the, the, the horizontal process and the vertical integration from pre-design to building operation, providing data sets uh, with um, software tools from uh, the very first uh, uh, data available at, um, from concept design, from even from brief, uh, then concept design, then uh, more detailed design using uh, more and more uh, configurations of data and more um, details in representation also of the objects and even the building if possible to, to get finally into a full integrated solution merging object modeling and um, that means product virtual product modeling and building modeling providing also data available for comparison between reality monitoring uh, of, of real production and monitoring of real irradiance for instance and the simulation and these results will be published soon at the end of the PV site project the BIPV complexity uh, paradigm sorry, is uh, horizontal and vertical, as represented before, because uh, BIPV technology have to be chosen at present stage, but they, they present lack of details and uh, they need to keep flexibility. So uh, we need to provide parameters, but not too much at the beginning. And the verticality, is also the need of um, parameters for multi-technical uh, purposes to set up competent uh, level in the same time as building integration issues and for the use of a multidisciplinary team to integrate. So this paradigm is our leader for development. And we are in the middle of the commitment uh, for the project consortium and uh, the work packages of the PV sites projects. Uh, PV sites is a 3D and a BIM software. Is not only one software, but it's a solution. All you need to start, as presented also before uh, with a few pictures by Chair Tiak, is a 3D model and weather data. Weather data, of course, very important to generate the right inputs for irradiance distribution. And we use 3D simulation also to uh, merge 3D modeling of the building and uh, good distribution on this model and also surroundings, maybe trees, uh, other buildings uh, of the irradiance coming from the uh, weather data file. So to simplify, we can use a sketch uh, software like SketchUp or more complex BIM software like Autodesk Revit. And we need to use sources of data and they are mainly for simulation purposes, typical Meteo yearly files, a set of 10 or 15 or even 13 uh, years of data set merged together to produce one typical year in portable into the software, and this is our baseline to run calculation. And this is very important because, of course, you have to uh, be aware of the validity of the data and the versatility, of course, of the providers of uh, sources. The main provider for the 3D model, of course, is the architect. In this case, Turk, uh, as architect, drawn this uh, equal Hotelier de Genève and you can see that in SketchUp you get into a very good uh, accuracy compared to reality. The main features of the software, the PVCI software based on BIM Solar and today uh, and soon distributed as the new version of BIM Solar is as I said 3D distribution of radiance, real-time calculation to allow module mapping and what if analysis, because as a designer, you will need to distribute your um, models on the roof, for instance, in this picture, or on, on a carport, or even on the facade, as shown. But you need to control the performance, and the performance is, of course, energy. 
the energy distribution coming from the sun and energy production mainly and also impact of on the building skin of course because these solutions be apv or be ipv has have to be integrated or semi-integrated on the building skin and you need also to to get readable results good results at uh, various step time uh, time time step sorry like hourly step time uh, like um, yearly, monthly, uh, or a typical day. So simulation computation lead to decision. Here we, you will see the software presentation. Presentation, sorry, on the typical uh, demo site for for PV sites. I will comment it. So in this case, we will catch of course and uh, do the lead the brief catching location first so we need to consider of course the conditions of the site the existing building the house and then we need to get the 3d model and the 3d way comes from the architect of course so we have a set set of good elements we have location accurate location of the of the project we have an idea of the surroundings and we got the most accurate uh, enough accurate um, 3d modeling and we need to generate uh, now the inputs of the weather data so we provide this source and we integrate this into the software so software is merging as you can see now the weather sources together with a 3d model of building plus surrounding the horizontal masking is not represented but integrated interpolated into the weather files so if you integrate your project into the mountain you will all already get uh, impact of the shading effects of the landscape then you can run a survey about how to choose the albedo because albedo of course is reflected energy from the surroundings and other buildings so it's good to set up the albedo then uh, you consider the mapping of irradiance with various modes so you can uh, map your irradiance completely Mm, detail mapping you can zoom uh, zoom in zoom out you can consider a facade and uh, of course the main target here is the, the roof so there is no uh, issue with shading except the chimney small chimney on this roof and then you can also uh, analyze uh, with other tools, uh, direct radiance reception, typical seasonal reception, uh, to consider a full year of uh, met meteor data and radiance data, to make sure that you are not uh, going to avoid um, a big issue. And for some projects, of course, uh, it will be very, very important to analyze deeply in detail in this case you can see the impact of um, of the chimney then you are able to uh, think and design think and design as explained by Tiag before is considering the ambition of uh, the client and the ambition of the architect together with uh, the BIPV experts so as explained in the second webinar yesterday we are now able to provide the very first data set of BIPV PV sites uh, products, virtual products. They are integrated into the software as a database, PV size database, and you can use it and you can use them. But in this case, it's uh, a tile, a CIGS thin theme technology tile to uh, distribute your layout, your module layout on the roof. And this is also 3D modeling together with simulation because you get instant simulation of the global production the first global kpis are displayed on the the range uh, window on the on the left but you can map your module performance module by module and get the global figures these are the global figures of production and you can get into a lot of uh, detailed results 
model by model or row by row and at inverter level, of course, because you will be able to set up inverter uh, performance in the next process. These results, for instance, show you the seasonality of production. This is PV production, of course, at the array level from models. So you can go from uh, yearly to monthly to daily to hourly uh, considerations. Then you, of course, you have to go more into detail. You can fine tune uh, the, the process of uh, um, building your models. And these, this is now a question of BIM, of course. And uh, later on, Willie will we'll explain our new development on this uh, PV side product focused on pure BIM with the Autodesk Revit. This is the rendering of, um, of the same model from BIM Solar, but now into the BIM uh, Autodesk Revit software. So now it's time for Willy to explain more in detail what is the BIM readiness and the BIM performance. Thank you, Philippe. Hello, everyone. So the challenge was to the, what the, the question, how to ensure the interoperable, interoperability between the BIM modeler and the BIM Solar software. So next, please. So we have the model of a building that was designed in the BIM modeler on the left. In our case, it's uh, Autodesk Revit. And for this example, we have imported the SketchUp 3D model. Now, we want to, to do the solar analysis and the design of the BIPV system with BIM Solar. And then we want to feed back the results to the BIM modeler. Next, please. So for this, we have developed two plugins in uh, Autodesk Revit. The first one is to export the BIM model of the building to BIM Solar. This is done in a, with XML format. And the second plugin is to import the BIPV, a BIPV system that we have designed in BIM Solar in order to enhance and uh, update the BIM model. Next, please. So for this, uh, uh, we use e-product that are available in the e-catalog. So for example, on the left, we have the, the Fison tile. And if there is no, um, no module available in the e-catalog, we use generic parametric BIPV. So these are Revit families. So I will show you this on the a small demo. So please start the demo. Thank you. So we start in Revit with this model. This was a SketchUp model imported in Revit. And then we have the plugin to export this to Beam Solar. So it's very simple, just specify the, the file. It's a Revit XML file that we will export. Now in Beam Solar, we will in import this file. We just created, we specify the weather data. And we have our 3D model. Then we do the design and the simulation. As it was shown before by Philippe in very in much detail. And when the design is finished, we will export this. So we will save the file. 
it's also an XML file. And we go back to Revit and we use the second plugin to import this uh, XML file. So the plugin will import the designs that we have done in Beam Solar. And here you can show that we have, you can see that we have the, these free zone tiles that are imported and with all the properties of these tiles. So we have a technical sp uh, specification and the geometrical data also. So to do this, we have a specific uh, Revit families. So for example, this Fizon tile that was downloaded from the e-catalog. For this, we have all the properties, like geometrical properties and the technical properties. And if there are no, um, no specific uh, family, we use a, a generic family in which we can uh, change, for example, the geometrical data. And this changes are do automatically by the, the, the plugin by reading the, the file generated by Beam Solar. Okay, next, please. Okay, that's all for me, so thank you. So Philip, you can continue your presentation. Thank you very much, William. So, uh, this introduces, of course, to the PV Sites e-catalog as presented yesterday, but it's good to present it again today, uh, maybe shortly, but uh, because it's, it, it was the ambition for PV Sites project from BIPV design uh, to, to beam elements to be able to provide the next generation of virtual objects, because I guess this is the first time we are able to provide a, a comprehensive library of uh, beam uh, compatible beam ready objects uh, together between a simulation work, workspace and um, a leader solution like Autodesk Revit, which shows of course Autodesk Revit because we are distributors and it's the leading construction uh, design and construction solution today on the, on the planet. So yes. Uh, so we develop this comprehensive library for six types of models, as you can see, two manufacturers, uh, Flisom from Switzerland and Onyx Solar from Spain, and two inverters specifically developed for the PV site product, not as commercial inverters, but as prototypes today, but available on the on production on the on the demo sites from uh, CEF in France and from uh, uh, Tecnalia in, in Spain. So I will go uh, briefly into the e-product design process. As you, you've seen the, the result, of course, uh, into the, um, the Revit software, the BIM software from Autodesk, but uh, of course the process is this one. First, you take the data sheet in, in your hands from the manufacturer. This is the main source, of course, in this case, Freesome. Uh, always the same use case in this presentation is the, the FD2 house in Belgium. So this is uh, a Frisom tile prototype on the paper. Then you need to uh, provide the modeling, um, uh, integrating uh, parameters into a more dynamic way into the BIM Solar software. This is in our language, a BIPV module editor, configurator of, uh, of data. So you can see uh, even flat, but it's a, a dynamic representation of uh, the object itself, the, the solar module for simulation purposes only, not uh, full beam at this moment, but for simulation calculation purposes with uh, the, 
necessary, necessary set of parameters. Then you go into fine tuning with manufacturers and architects. So this is uh, in total relation with the fine tuning also of the building itself. So this is why this process is, is crucial. Uh, so you can see that we change the uh, dimensions and because of the parameterization and the dynamics of the objects, it's easy uh, inside the software to, to, to make variants and changes uh, of the object in the same time in the collaborative manner uh, that the architectural, te architectural team uh, make variants uh, of the building itself. Then you get as a result, as a beam result, a beam readiness result, uh, the Autodesk Revit family of the, of the project. Uh, so, a detailed design, of course, of the object it's, itself, more, design, more detailed, better design than in the, in the simulation software. And you can see the result uh, integrated um, on the 3D model, beam model, um, Autodesk Revit. So I will go through the, the different uh, products. Uh, FLISOM, first of all, uh, with the theme theme uh, technologies. We develop uh, uh, four types of, um, of models. First one uh, called the commercially e-roof is the house tile that you, you've seen in the presentation. You can see the three uh, presentations of the same um, the same object, first uh, one for into Beam Solar, second uh, on, on, on the bottom into Revit, more detail, and uh, commercially presented into the web workspace because on the web you will find them, we, we, you will discover them through um, a user tour, a presentation tour, of course, and you will be able to download them both for simulation and uh, for beam uh, purposes. Then uh, the carport demo site needed bendable uh, products, bendable models, and we develop uh, also innovation in this sense to be able to model and to simulate uh, this kind of, of new product. Uh, E-facade is a, a cladding material, a cladding model. Uh, to be hung out, hung, hung on, sorry, on the on the facade. So you you can see the, the three representations also. Industrial roof model integrable uh, into existing traditional uh, uh, roof for hangars or uh, flat industries uh, building with a white uh, metal shape and uh, a specific design to be integrated. So you can see, you can see the, the difference also between the simulation uh, object and the full beam uh, object. As a result, you can see now uh, the, real, um, the real products on site. From Odic Solar, we develop uh, the two uh, crystalline silicon products uh, with glazing system. So the ambition here was to uh, mix uh, different elements. That means um, layers of glass with the glass properties together with uh, lamination, uh, virtual lamination of uh, PV cells. So they are, as you can see, integrated into um, BIPV models editors and uh, integrated now as beam ready objects into Revit. So you will find again all the properties into the the beam workspace, able to be used with uh, sister solutions in the global beam uh, process to uh, calculate and and simulate um, any kind of of, um, of properties. The second product, semi-transparent, is uh, called the X6 uh, glass glass product with back contact uh, crystalline silicon cells. So you can not see any boost bar on the front of the module. The contacts are, are back. You can see an outlook of the simulation workspace and the rendering also. Even if you don't, if you don't see the connections, this will be a future work to develop also a visualization of the connection. Uh, you can get already a beam object of this uh, new kind of module from Onyx Solar. 
you can see the real uh, the reality today for Onyx Solar, uh, the real building and real products. And uh, this is virtualization today in the simulation workspace because we put efforts to feature in 3D even during the simulation, calculation, and what if analysis uh, stages, the more the best rendered uh, solution to be able to anticipate also the aesthetics and the transparency, for instance. So it's a deal between simulation, calculation, and rendering. Uh, this is the, the ex external uh, shape of, uh, of, the, of the building from Nix Solar. Uh, the two inverters from uh, CIA and Tegnalia, we developed them as uh, parametric objects, but not real 3D objects in the simulation workspace, neither in as beam objects, because um, they are not commercial um, Product today, so we we stayed at the full parametric and full uh, technical step, but they are of, of course uh, ex exporting their uh, their data and their performance uh, into the the PV site solution, and you can see they they are able to get um, MPPTs to get uh, strings to 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 connect strings and to connect models of course with strings and uh, they are able to provide the data settings uh, from uh, inverter level to cable even cable level so uh, of course they participate into the, the performance of the the virtual layout uh, the use of the pv side product the use was made through demonstrators, so I will go quickly through every every uh, demo site with the results. So this is um, the main uh, example we take: the FD2 uh, house in Belgium, renovation of uh, roof with a brand new tile from uh, Frisom and uh, a new kind of inverter by Tegnalia, a stor uh, storage inverter, DC coupled storage inverter. So we, uh, I, I want to highlight the, the traditional um, uh, process uh, dealing between architecture and uh, specification at uh, um, at roof level and at uh, um, element level. You can see uh, detailed uh, uh, configuration of how to to clamp the the, the modules together. We develop, of course, the solution into Beam Solar. This is the result. You can see um, also the the wearing of the models exactly in the same uh, reproduction as reality, and uh, the final result as presented by Willy as a beam roof. The very first example, maybe, uh, of a BIPV beam roof for a single house. The real result is here and here. For École de de Genève, this was the case of a facade with a lot of uh, shading issues. So, as you can see, we use the simulation performance of uh, the software together with the performance of uh, the, the product, of the virtual product itself, to be able to map irradiance and shading issues, and also to map production, of course. This is the BIM model together with the virtual um, clamping uh, module from FISOM and the uh, distribution of these modules are in line with simul simulation, the uh, positioning of the modules and uh, the objectives of the project team uh, with architect and uh, the client of course, for the final uh, client. The carports are a specific case, interesting case uh, for PV sites because uh, the design is original, of course, and the purpose also. So we developed these specific uh, models, bendable models, uh, together with, in line also with um, uh, simulation models, and we are able to distribute the evidence on uh, this uh, particular case with also shading effects. You can see uh, the typical days on the, on the diagrams uh, as results, and you can see the seasonal effects, of course, on production for the winter months. 
And this is the result on the full beam solution like uh, Autodesk Revit with uh, the Revit family of these new models. And the final result in reality. Industrial building, this is the uh, irradiance mapping, a uh, very high level of irradiance uh, uh, in Spain, in uh, Catalonia, near Barcelona. So you can see the, the irradiance together with uh, the modeling of the final object uh, able to be integrated into the beam solution also. And this is the beam roof. with Autodesk Revit, and this is the real roof as a result. Crystalline silicon technology, this is the facade of um, a residential building, collective building in France with the Onyx Solar uh, Innovation, opaque uh, glazing system, crystalline silicon. So you can see the representation of the virtual object for beam solar and it's used into beam solar to map irradiance and to map also production and losses at model level for the entire facade. And you can see holes because we didn't want to represent the dummy models because for architectural and aesthetic reasons, we had to use dummy models, of course, for the final rendering. But this is not necessary, of course, to um, distribute uh, dummy models for simulation purposes. This is the rendering and the module representation. Black, of course, uh, with uh, non-black cells, but um, the, 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 the original and, and also final cells are maybe more black than the, these ones, but this is the final result for the virtual uh, rendering into Revit with the sets of parameters to be able to be used in the BIM um, software later on. This is the final result on the facade. And the uh, last uh, demo site is uh, office building in um, uh, Basque Country, uh, Tegnalia office in San Sebastian, near San Sebastian. And uh, we have two facades and we developed the virtualization of uh, the transparent Onyx Solar product, X6 product. So you can see the result into Revit distributed on the facade and with the parameters. And the, the exact result as reality. So BIM, is able to anticipate this, of course, impact um, for aesthetical reasons, of course, but uh, technical reasons for sure. But the results, I can say today that the project results are to be published officially. So I cannot um, display figures uh, side by side because they are not officialized. They have to be officialized between uh, partners within the consortium. So to explain uh, what we did is to simulate a typical uh, data set for weather data, then uh, data set from coming from monitoring of the data. Irradiance is very important, as you know. To be able to provide PV to DC inverter input to AC inverter output and losses and even yield finally from uh, uh, every single um, element um, in this uh, in this project. So you can see a representation of the single house with uh, AC and DC production and losses, of course. Uh, DC to AC losses. This is convention uh, in, within the the inverter, this is typical. So we will produce, of course, uh, the final uh, document for the result and comparison study between uh, simulation and monitoring. How to get PV sites e-products? Because this is one of the main objectives of the PV site project is to deliver the product in the final version, able to be used by you as BIM Solar users. As explained yesterday, but uh, 
I shortly explain today again. The, the PVSAT portfolio will be available, available on the, the official Beam Solar website, also on the, the PVSAT uh, project website. Uh, and the public release will be made 1st of July. You can have an overview of the PVSAT portfolio of uh, virtual and also real project. So together with Kirk and uh, WIP, we are um, finalizing this portfolio to be able to offer you uh, a complete tour and a complete experience within these, uh, these new innovations. Uh, this is an outlook of the e-catalog, uh, compatible for Beam Solar and compatible with Revit as Beam Ready objects able to be downloaded by yourself. On one hand, you have the possibility to add, add to cart, but add to software, to use software for free uh, as Beam Solar users, the, the products. So you will get a new database called the PVSI database of the virtual products. And on the other hand, you will be as um, maybe an um, Autodesk Revit user, you will be able to download the Revit families of each product and each version of Revit, because you can see we are providing from uh, 2018 to 2021 versions of the, the products, the BIM products, the BIM, uh, uh, BIM ready products. And you will also be able to get additional material, additional information, notice for users, and of course the PV sites, plugins ready for download. How to get the software? Of course, Beam Solar will be published in version 1.3 soon, 1st of July. Uh, able to be downloaded from the uh, official website, of course, but also from uh, the PV sites, uh, official website. And the plugins, typical, uh, as I explained before, but to, 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 to put a, 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 a of a forecast and, uh, and uh, a point on, on, on this uh, performance, and they will be able to be downloaded from uh, uh, CAD Commission and soon uh, Autodesk Store as uh, the uh, uh, a new asset into the, the Autodesk uh, community. So, of course, be connected to the, the CAD Commission official website to be. Uh, aware of uh, the release of the PV sites plugins together with Beam Solar. You can see the download space on the Beam Solar web, uh, web page. As from my conclusion, for our conclusions, uh, we put our main efforts uh, to product virtualization, to collaborative workspace, because we are now able to join uh, different sources of 3D modeling like uh, SketchUp, like uh, Autodesk Revit together and also simulation workspace, calculation workspace all together within a BIM uh, perspective. The BIM readiness from element to building level is uh, today reality. If it's the first step of course because we're going to go into more details with the sister project and because it's a long story uh, it's, a, uh, as explained, a vertical and a horizontal story. And the web platform to retrieve a digital asset will be ready for public release uh, the 1st of July. Thank you for your attention and uh, let's uh, step into perspective uh, with uh, BIM uh, and, uh, and more innovations uh, with OneKai now. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Philippe, for the nice presentation and uh, congratulations uh, also for the impressive work uh, that you, you and we, of course, have done for this presentation. So, yes, as uh, Philippe already said, uh, it's now the turn from, uh, for Bankai. We are closing the session after this presentation on beam and connections for architecture, engineering and construction. So, uh, Bankai, I'm going to display uh, your presentation right now. And uh, yeah. please ask me to, uh, move, to move the slides. And I will yeah. uh, Pablo, I, I think I have a question uh, probably to Philip. Please, maybe we could answer to this question first. Uh, yes, sure. 
the, uh, the which one is your question? Uh, uh, the, uh, audience. <laughs> ah, yeah, for the audience. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, Banca, I don't worry. Uh, I seen the question here, uh, but uh, I guess that Philip will answer uh, right now. But we will we will clarify the question during the last. We will have some okay. at the end of the session, and I will read the question. Uh, yes, okay. just, yes, just to tell the audience that I sent my answer just right now, but we can go into more details uh, at the end, of course. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so it's my uh, hard task to close this session by uh, giving you some dreams, for example, <laughs> about uh, digitalization. Okay, uh, you know that uh, dig digitalization is very uh, key uh, strategic uh, objective in the coming years. And as you can see, uh, after the pandemic or during the pandemic of COVID-19, uh, most of uh, us uh, has the occasion, the opportunity to turn to digital, to experience uh, digital life through Zoom, for example, or through other uh, activities online. So let back to the technical aspect. I would like to highlight to remind a little bit uh, what is the BIM model today and where we are come from and where we should move towards. So, so next please. Uh, as you can see, uh, some years, many years ago, let's say in uh, the year 1980, uh, is uh, aerospace and uh, uh, automotive industry uh, people used to make a lot of mold. There's the mold makers, and when they make molds, they need to perform what we call the master model. And the master model at that time was really a physical model, and this master model was a reference for all the different uh, stakeholders to work together. This is a collaborative communication reference for them. And starting from the year 80, uh, SCAT system start to, to appear on the market with AutoCAD or, or some other 3D system at that time already for the aerospace industry. And uh, the master model has moved from the physical to somehow digital aspect with the CAD components, CAD drawings, and so things like that. And you can see all the other disciplines, uh, marketing, calculation, simulation, prototyping, all of them are referred to this CAD model. Next, please. Okay, today, we can summarize a little bit the uh, uh, technology path of uh, digitalization. We can start from the design data, at least this picture uh, represents what has happened in industry, automotive industry and aerospace industry. And one thing I should give you a remark beforehand that uh, the productivity of industry, automotive, and aerospace is twice the productivity of the building industry uh, today. Because, well, the reason probably because that, that this industry are much more digitalized than the building today. Okay, so we have to catch up this in the building sector, the construction sector. As you can see. Uh, the automotive industry or aerospace industry start with the design of the object and around this design today we are able to do all the analysis, stress analysis, thermal analysis, what you want. Uh, you can also uh, 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 compare with the reality uh, to do the digital mockup and uh, the prototype and to improve the, the quality by inspection and so on. And at the last, uh, when you launch the product into the market, uh, you have the possibility also today to fit 
the product with sensors, and these sensors allow you to monitor uh, the health of the product during operation. That we mean, uh, as I, I resume here, we start from the design data, we go to the identity data, the identity data when the product was born, and the, the last one is the performance data or the health data that accompany the product during its life cycle. So this is something like uh, life science in, for human, from the medical aspect, we, we are following the same. There is a convergence uh, between different sectors today, thanks to the digitalization. Next, please. Okay, today, if I uh, uh, match this process with the construction and mainly uh, with, if we talk about uh, uh, NZB building, uh, near zero building in the future, uh, of course, energy must be provided by uh, renewable source and mainly the solar energy. So, uh, we today we uh, realize that the solar industry, PV industry mainly, are somehow disconnect from the other industry. The PV industry today is not really integrated in, uh, and follows the same rules, the same process like uh, the manufacturing, the conventional, traditional manufacturing industry, and it's not yet also integrated into the building industry. So the, our goal today is to define what we call this, the digital trade to record the, the PV plant lifetime from its creation to its removal. So you, you can see the different stage as design, as simulate, as manufacture for the PV uh, modules and PV uh, panels, for example, as install within the beam process and as monitor. And then we can introduce this concept of digital twin. So digital twin replicate exactly the same or mimic the same behavior of the reality and allow us to see, to predict the future. So please, next. Here, I would like to show you uh, so add the value of information. As you know, today from data, you you can uh, extract information from the information, you can define the knowledge, and all of these things are the oil of our century today. It's all, all everything are based on this uh, process of information. So if we start from engineering aspect, starting from the engineer uh, office, the engineer office has some knowledge about the product you want to, design, so he formalizes his product and he transforms it into data. Today, as you can see, most of the machine, machinery are based on data uh, because they are controlled by very uh, uh, simple uh, data, data set. But tomorrow, we can also encapsulate uh, all this, uh, the knowledge into the machine controller, in order the machine controller can process directly the information on the knowledge level, not only the data level. So for example, for the industry, you can see that we use a very simple data set to control the numerical control or automation. And from the other side, uh, when we install uh, the product or we build the building, we can install uh, also fit also with a uh, sensor and based on the internet of object, the new technology trend, we can monitor all the, the, the reality uh, operation and match it with the simulated behavior as we did before. This is the biggest challenge we have in the coming years into 
integrate to marry both work, real and virtual world together. So there are a lot of scientific uh, scientists uh, working on this aspect because it is not easy. You have uh, to marry the, uh, what we call the invariant mathematical model with the real time uh, uh, mathematical model uh, that people you, uh, can extract from what they call the new techniques like data analytics. And then we can close this loop. If we can close this loop towards the future, we can really then enter what we call circular economy because we, we can uh, manage the product from uh, trade to travel. Next, please. Okay, so I just introduced here the concept of digital twins. Uh, as you can see, there are different digital twins uh, that depends on what you want to, uh, what is your objective. Uh, first, well, mainly we have a two kind of digital twins, uh, three uh, sometimes, but at least two. One is the digital twin reflecting the simulation. What do I call that prototype digital twins or the simulated digital twins? And the other side, we have the digital twin mimicking the real behavior of uh, the PV plant in our case, for example. As you can see, uh, here we have, uh, for example, from uh, uh, beam solar or uh, PV size software, we can simulate uh, irradiance and the behavior of the building and we can use also for example we did not talk about that but if we go for, uh, for more deeper into the engineering uh, details uh, with higher level of details we can use also also so other software for calculating the engineering aspect the yield of uh, the energy of the building using for example energy plus software uh, all this part belong to what we call the simulate world. And when you build up the building, you can also then uh, build the performance twin. And these performance twins can give you uh, a lot of data uh, through some kind of IoT platform based on broker uh, data, data, and then you can transform this data. You have to match this data with the simulate data to compare them, and then you will have a complete digital twin. Next, please. Okay, so what I said before, uh, the different uh, innovation issue we we had uh, we have uh, uh, performed in our uh, PV side project we did the beam data integration uh, aggregation as you can see we are uh, also compatible with the market software like uh, Autodesk and other system also if you use IFC format and we have also developed uh, innovative uh, algorithm for or uh, calculation based on ray tracing algorithm. Uh, I would like to highlight this because it's something is more holistic than uh, the anal analogical uh, formula uh, used by uh, some uh, existing system in the market. Uh, with the ray tracing algorithm, we perform the world constant bounding in total, the whole envelope of the building. We did not enter uh, some key value, key data into the analogical uh, formulas. So uh, our concept today, what is very important, this model is scalable. That means tomorrow, if you have other uh, physical base issue you want to solve, we can do using, for example, finite element or whatever uh, algorithm based on the same symmetrical models. Next, please. And this is my last 
slide. I, uh, I would like to highlight this key aspect of the digital twin. Digital twins allow you to see the future and now. This is quite important. And based on what we call the cyber war, and for sure today, is something that we, we are talking today. Uh, what is the post-COVID era? I think the post-COVID era, for sure, uh, uh, we must sustain the green growth, like uh, the European Green Deal that is uh, in preparation for the next uh, uh, programs, uh, research program. And uh, that means that we, uh, the energy transition must be enabled by a full digitalization process. This, I think, is very important. And energy, then, if we go to the circular economy, energy must be considered as a service. And then we can reach, we can attend the triple button line uh, virtue, as we used to say. And the last point, uh, you know, usually we say that you should not uh, sell the beer, uh, uh, beer with, uh, before killing it. <laughs> and today we can say, okay, we can sell the virtual uh, beer uh, skill and we do not need to kill it before. This, I think, is from the moral speaking uh, point of view, is better. So we can do, we can go forward, we can, we can take risks based on virtual model. So thank you. Many thanks, uh, Bankai, uh, also for the next presentation. So I think uh, this was the last, uh, the last uh, presentation of the session. I've seen that there were some questions from the audience, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna read them loud. I did for the for everyone, uh, but also uh, we all still have some time. So in, in case you want to have, uh, in case you want to, to do some uh, few more questions, you will still have time. So uh, first question uh, from the audience that we received is um, is related to. PV size software and is uh, well, the, the the participant is asking how are the comparison between PV size simulation results and monitoring data, especially for PV facade. Thanks. So uh, yes, Philip, I see that uh, you already you already answered, but uh, just to be clarified with yeah. uh, with the, uh, with all the participants, you can. Maybe yeah, just to explain that. The results are very sensitive, of course. So publication of results is always a, a, a delicate mission. So it's not our mission; uh, it's a consortium mission and um, an official thing. So they they are under um, verification, of course, because the project is ending next week, and they will be officially published. So we cannot today publish official results, so I can show you the, the process, I can show you some outlooks, but not the, the official results. But I can say that we are working, still working on the data sets from monitoring and uh, we have good surprises because from uh, simulation, between simulation and real monitoring of real production, because we speak uh, uh, about uh, electrical production, because of the impact on the building skin for thermal uh, reasons and comfort of our solutions today with the demo sites is uh, low, so it's not significant. So we are focusing, of course, on electrical production, and this is the main interest for everybody today, how to produce electricity. But we, are, we have good surprises. Good. Thanks, uh, Philippe. Um, indeed, um, also the, the same participant is asking, uh, could you please tell me how you define indirect radiation? Uh, it, it is, is it caused uh, by the albedo only? Yes, uh, not, not uh, in, indirect radiation. Uh, if you oppose it to direct radiation, it, it's a, a sum of diffuse irradiance and reflected irradiance. You can Consider the sky, and the sky uh, is full of uh, solar energy, but you can get solar direct energy, diffuse energy if you have clouds. You get energy, but lower energy, but you get diffuse energy. But if you get direct radiation, uh, you can also consider that like a mirror for a visible light, 
for energy, solar energy, uh, the reflective, the reflect session of the the energy on the on the ground maybe on the the other building facades for instance if they are white they reflect a lot of energy so we take this into consideration uh, partly from the weather data files because we separate from the global irradiance the diffuse and the direct irradiance the two main components and we Resimulate the reflected irradiance, taking into account the albedo settings that we enable the user of the software to set. So you just need to click on the surfaces, and this is also a 3D good aspect of the use of a new software. You can just have to click on the pre-identified, recognized surfaces from the 3D model, from SketchUp, from from um, Revit. You click on the surface into the software and you just allocate 20%, 50%. You are responsible for your values, of course. But the typical values for Albedo, they are well known, so it's not a big issue. Thanks, Philippe. Um, there is, uh, I think we have time for uh, two more questions. I have already here. The yeah. questions, one question is related to, to the BIM model of the products. And now uh, the participant is asking if, besides the electrical characteristics, uh, we are also, in, or you are also including uh, mechanical performance uh, data, uh, line bearing, product size, etc. This is a, this is a very important question, of course, a very good perspective also. But besides, what the first step to become BIPV plus BIM? So you can see we focused highly on. Uh, parameterization and uh, parametrics of objects with dimensions, with the number of cells, location of the cells, uh, lamination. So a lot of uh, very important parameters to build in real um, a module, for instance. But also electrical parameters are besides. And uh, all other physical parameters like um, characteristics of the, the glass that we use with Onyx Solar. Uh, maybe characteristic also of the metal sheet we use with Flissom as the substrate to, to, to support the, 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 active, uh, the active skin. So all these parameters are sometimes hidden uh, um, for the user because they are not we, we cannot display every parameter, but of course there are, there are a lot and they are needed for other purposes like electrical engineering, of course, uh, mechanical engineering, because you need the dimensions, you need, you need specific uh, weight and uh, you need uh, U-values also of the products. So they are embedded. But of course, to answer completely the question, we want to go further into details and further to link this beam world to manufacturing world. And this goes back to the, the beginning of the presentation. Uh, and the aim of CATCAMATION, for instance, uh, was um, at the beginning to merge PLM for manufacturing and beam. So we're going to be able, of course, to link these objects, beam objects, to the production lines. And this is another product, a sister product, the following product. Uh, BIPV Boost, European project, and we are dealing, of course, downstream to uh, enrich the data, enrich the object, and detail the object. So we're going to go more into details for detail design, but also manufacturing, and also construction and maintenance, operation and maintenance. So the digital twin also will be a solution for the next project, BIPV Boost, because we're going to couple Complete a couple, uh, a, de a derived version of Beam Solar for digital twin uh, uh, ambition. Thanks, uh, Philippe. Um, I've seen also a question related to <coughs> the, the system system operation. So, will Beam Solar work with uh, for all the platforms for Mac, Windows, Linux? Yeah, it's a big issue, of course. Uh, there are a lot of uh, Macintosh users, we know, but it's difficult to develop the one solution for every operating system because the technology are different and we have to do a lot of maintenance and we have to be BIM. And BIM, uh, for instance, Revit is not uh, 
Macintosh compatible, so it's uh, it's uh, a difficult question. So we decided to focus on Windows because we don't have resources also to develop for every operating system. But we tested for Macintosh, for instance, and if you use Parallels Desktop, the virtualization of your desktop to emulate Windows on Macintosh, it works perfectly. So I can say that Beam Solar works with Macintosh, but you just need to be able to to to, to get the the parallels model for your Macintosh um, operating system. It's not a, a big a big deal. Uh, thanks, Philippe. So, last question is uh, about uh, making the building, making the rotation of the building possible in the software. So, uh, yes, it will be possible in the next version because, as you know, uh, or I can explain shortly, we we do a child um, Scrum. Uh, development methodology, so we listen a lot to the user, to the market, and of course we have a program defined, for instance PV sites, a roadmap, but we have to listen also to the users. So we found out that uh, because of mistakes in the original orientation of the 3D models, and it's not our business in fact to in interfere with the original uh, 3D model, but we have to correct sometimes the orientation or the wrong orientation of the building. Or you want to test or the ideal orientation of a future uh, a possible building. This is more the, 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 the strategic planning. So yes, we open this possibility. So you will find it in the next version, the official public release of Beam Solar, 1st of July, of course, with other uh, enhancements for the software itself. Perfect. Thanks, Philippe. So I think that <clears throat> this was the last uh, the last question. Uh, we can uh, close the webinar here. So indeed, uh, I will I would like to thank uh, to thank all the speakers, all the participants, not only for this session but also during the previous sessions that uh, that uh, happened during this week on Tuesday, uh, Wednesday, and today. So it has been a very interesting uh, webinar. I hope uh, you enjoyed. Uh, and then uh, I invite you to to follow to follow the project. We are ended. Uh, we are ending the project at the end of the month, but we still have to, uh, we still have uh, some results to publish. So I invite you to to subscribe to our website, besides.eu, and also to follow us uh, on, on social media. And uh, nothing else from, from my side. Um, I hope you have a nice day and uh, thanks for part your participation and uh, see you see you next time.